Hello everyone, this is Matt O'Neill. I'm actually the editor for the People's Forum blog and this afternoon we've been running a series of live virtual events here from the Royal Commonwealth Society in London. I thought I might catch up very briefly with one of our speakers, David Gallopo. He's actually been here talking about uh, the effect of communications technology on civil society organisations. Uh, David, perhaps we could start uh, with our first question. Why is social media so important to civil society organisations nowadays? Well, I think civil society, I think it's important to civil society on a couple of layers. I think internally from the organisation, it, it, it will go through a process of the organisation can understand itself, who its audience is, who they're trying to reach and what the messages are. Uh, from the other side, it really is where their audience is moving towards and it does give an extra platform not only to push information, but also to get feedback. It creates that feedback loop where people want to participate, suggest, uh, and uh, to join the dialogue, and to become much more involved. I think that's where social media actually adds that extra layer on top. So knowing the organizational benefits, how does, for example, one of our individual uh, viewers watching this video sort of make their first steps to engaging in social media with their organizations? Well, I think whether you're an, an individual, a medium-sized organization or a large organization. I think you have to understand who you're trying to reach and at what layer are they, where are they speaking, and try to get involved in what they're doing and into their dialogue. And I think this is where looking at the different tools and tactics of social media, you can define how to reach them best. So once an organization's actually involved in the social space, what sort of risks could they anticipate? Risks are inherent in any communication strategy. One thing which civil society has to understand is the level of transparency. It has to build trust. It has to really tell the truth, talk to its audience, and try to empower its audience. So that's one part of the risk. The organization has to understand it. On the other side, it's a question of who participates from the organizational layer. If, a ver if several people have social media projects going on at the same time, the messages may become mixed. So it is a bit of a, a way of understanding how to speak to the audience from multiple points. Organizations love to measure what they do. How would they go about measuring success when engaging with social media? Well, I think this is where an organization can build on its current measurements around its website. Individual measurements around page views, visitor numbers. I think if you add that on and go to the impact, this is what social media is about, participation. How many people sign up for a newsletter? How many people come to a workshop you're organizing at your place? How many people go to a civil demonstration in a public place? How many people are donating? These are measurements that you can understand the value of your individual social media project. Thank you, David. I'd also like to point out that David will be running workshops uh, throughout the People's Forum in Trinidad in November. Uh, the workshops specifically will look at what we've just been talking around, um, this issue of uh, using the web for good with civil society organisations. Uh, if you're not actually in Trinidad, which I guess a lot of you aren't going to be, you can certainly follow the progress of his workshop by just staying in touch with the blog. That's peoplesforum.britishcouncil.org. Thank you.